so far. Michaela, come, can you help mommy? Michaela, can you come here please? Michaela. Hi everyone, welcome back with me, Aliza Sarah in Ask Me Doctor Season 4, a health video series for you and your family. As a parent, it can be really frustrating when your child isn't listening to you. Even worse yet, they outright ignore you. So you may wonder what you're doing wrong or if your child is particularly rebellious. But the truth is there are numerous reasons why kids don't listen, including the possibility that they have not developed this skill yet. Today, we are going to have a clinical psychologist to help us tackle this topic. Our guest speaker today is a clinical psychologist from Kin and Kids who works with children and families. Please welcome Sukhoi. Hi Sukhoi, how are you and welcome to our show. Hi Aliza, I'm fine, thank you and thank you for having me here as well. <laughs> thank you so much. So, we're actually really excited to talk about today's topic because my daughter is 2 plus now and she's developing her communication skills. And I'm actually kind of eager to know more about this phase of life. And you know, if you're ready, shall we start? Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's start. So jumping into our first question, um, would you be able to draw your question from this special jar right here? Yes, thank you so much. Why doesn't my child listen to me? Like, I guess when she's like two and a half, she's starting to be very confident about herself and sometimes she doesn't listen to me. So would you be able to explain to me and the parents out there who are watching? I think it's a very good question to begin with because it shows our willingness to understand why. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be quite frustrating like you say when our child doesn't listen and some parents may think that uh, my child doesn't respect me or like my child uh, trying to go against me and all that but yeah. as you say there are actually many possible reasons why mm -hmm. a child actually doesn't listen. Mm -hmm. uh, one common reason is that the child is actually focusing on something very interesting so they doesn't even hear us. Ah, yeah. so yeah, they're actually so. distracted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So another uh, reason is that uh, our message may not be very clear or it can be confusing mm -hmm. yeah? and, um, and some child haven't developed the skills to, deliver, uh, to process that instruction yet. So let's say if your child were just like uh, one year plus, mm -hmm. if you give like a two steps instructions, they will not be able to follow yet. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's also possible that the child hears us but chooses not to listen I because see. they don't understand the reason or can't relate to the message. So I think it's quite important to understand why when you want to tackle this uh, problem of child not I see, not listening. okay. That's actually a very good point. Like, thank you so much. So, I'm actually already excited to jump to the second question. Okay, sure. I'm gonna shake this a bit. Can you like, draw one question? Uh, this one? What should I do to get my child to listen to me? I don't know, I think it's every parent's struggle. Like, you know, when you give them instructions and they don't listen, so you know, what should we actually do to actually get them to mm. listen to us? Okay, I think there are uh, definitely ways that we can do to increase the responsiveness of our child towards mm -hmm. what we say. Right. Uh, the first step is we want to get the child attention first before we communicate. Okay. Uh, so it'd be good to go to their level, call their name, get their attention first before we give the instructions. So mm -hmm. timing is important. All right. So try not to approach them when they're in the middle of doing something. Right. Uh, so we have to respect their space a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And number two, we want to make sure our message is clear and consistent. And All sometimes right. uh, less is actually uh, more. Yeah. So we want to give a short and sweet message that mm -hmm. is easy for the child to digest. I see. Um, and then we want to make sure our verbal and non-verbal are actually consistent. Mm -hmm. So if we say like, um, girl, we have to go right now, but you are still looking at your phone, yeah, looking very relaxed, they're going to ignore the instructions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another okay. important thing is make sure both parents are giving consistent message because okay. it can be uh, confused yeah, if both are different. And you'll be good to sometimes add in uh, the reasons for our instructions or give some relevant information that can help also. I see, uh, I see. And, um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like putting everything in the list right now in my head. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I suppose number, number three is that we want to also make sure the child comprehends what we say. So mm -hmm. allow enough time for our child to actually process what we say right. uh, before we move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes if the message is so complicated, we also can get the child to repeat what we say. If they actually misunderstood or doesn't understand, we can kind of rephrase uh, what we say. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, it's also imp very important is that once they listen, we want to encourage that. So we want to give positive 
negative feedback. Mm -hmm. You are like, oh, I'm so happy that you are able to kind of put your toys away after playing, and mm -hmm. that's very responsible. So this will make the child kind of continue this good mm -hmm. behavior. Thank you so much for sharing, Sukhoi. Like. Uh, I think acknowledgement really plays a role when it comes to communicating with kids, right? Mm. I'm actually putting a lot of things in my list in my head already when I approach uh, Michaela, especially my daughter's mm. Michaela. Mm. <laughs> and okay, so shall we jump into our third question? Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, so now we're down to our third question for the day. Could you share what are the don'ts when my child won't listen? I think as a parent, it can be very frustrating uh, when they don't listen to you and you know what are we not supposed to do when they don't listen can you elaborate more on that okay i think there are indeed things that can worsen the situation mm -hmm. yeah, so especially like uh, parents like to nag when the child doesn't listen yeah, yeah so the more we nag what we say become less and less impactful and meaningless and naturally the child will just ignore what we say or okay. pay less attention to that which yeah. makes things worse right <laughs> So um, another thing is we want to avoid lecturing. No one likes like a long lecture. Yeah, and we want to also avoid things like uh, comparison, like mm -hmm. uh, why can't you be like your brother or things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and reduce uh, threatens, yeah, mm -hmm. threatening words like uh, if you don't listen to me right now, well, you have to pass your phone to me and things like that. So being overly critical is likely to affect your relationship with your child. They are going to be less open to what you say and this is going to affect the future uh, communication. I see. I didn't know that. Like, I thought that was a way of showing like, you know, uh, you have to listen to what I say because if not, you get a certain punishment, right? So that's not actually the right way to do it. Mm, you want to use that sparingly. Use it when necessary. <laughs> Don't use it too often. Okay, mm -hmm. that's actually a good tip. All right, thank you so much. Uh, okay, so we're going to jump into the fourth question. Okay, does not listening or responding could be a sign of rebellion? I think that's actually a lot of worry that every parent has because I don't want them to not listen to me and think that you know they're being rebellious. So I don't want my child to be brought up as a rebellion. So would you be able to uh, enlighten me if when they're not listening, does that mean they're rebellious or mm -hmm. is it just like a way of nature okay. of uh, growing up? <laughs> mm, I mean, autonomy is a uh, normal human drive. You can see that especially in toddlers who say yeah. no to yeah, everything. Yeah, she's starting to do that actually. <laughs> <laughs> or teenagers, they'll start to assert their opinions and all that. Yeah, so correct. it's possible that it can be part of power struggle when uh, children uh, don't listen. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there are actually uh, tips like, to deal with it. Yeah, so one okay. way is to actually give reasonable choices that's actually age appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Michaela, they want to choose this or that, or we want to do this now or do this after dinner. Sometimes it's good to not to say no every single time because some of the things are actually negotiable mm -hmm. and we do want to develop the child's uh, decision making skills. Right. right so right. we can return some of the opportunity to make decisions uh, to the child mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's age appropriate. I guess lastly, it would be good to tell the child what you want them to do instead of um, what not to do. So you say like, Nicola, don't jump on the sofa, don't run here and there. We can directly say, come look at this toy, this is interesting. Ah, uh, yeah. so it's like indirectly directing them to do something else that is less dangerous. Uh, Let's say it's they're doing. directly asking them what you want them to do. So right. this direct the behavior to like a positive direction. Yeah, I guess that's where uh, communicating with kids get a bit complicated for parents. You know, it's a very good tip for the parents out there. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Sukhoi. Mm -hmm. So before we end our show for today, uh, will you be able to share any uh, tips or advice to the parents out there? I guess the most important tip is that our child listens to us better when we have a good relationship yeah, with him or her because we generally listen to people whom we respect and also like. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think is uh, action speaks louder than words. So we want to model good listening skills before we state our expectations and rules. We can show that we understand their wishes, acknowledge yeah, their feelings and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, communication can be creative. Yeah, so sometimes we can uh, write a note instead of talking, we can uh, change the chores into a game, make it into a routine. So sometimes all this can be more effective than verbal reminders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and sometimes our, we don't have to be the person uh, to communicate that message. It can be our spouse, our 
a child's teacher, a child's friend, or passing some resources mm -hmm, uh, to mm -hmm. older child to read and to maybe they will kind of follow that factor. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, it will be important to have realistic expectations because there's no child who listens to parents all the time. Correct. <laughs> so <laughs> they are they are they are unique human with their own way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to choose our better. Yeah. Uh, be firm on things that actually matters. Yeah, correct. I think it's the mutual respect between an adult and a child as well because they're also their own individual, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I hope you uh, gain some practical tips from this episode and can start practicing uh, effective communication skills with your child. Thank you so much, Sukhoi, for sharing those knowledge and advice to all the parents out there, and including me. I'm learning a lot from you, actually. <laughs> for more informative and health-related videos for you and your family, be sure to stay tuned on Ask Me Doctor. Thank you for watching our video. Till next time, I'm Aliza Sarah. I'm Sophie. And this is motherhood.com.my. Bye!